Cool, so let's talk about alternating current just for a really brief spell. Uh, if you recall both current and uh, the potential difference uh, in an AC circuit, change polarities so, and magnitude continuously with time. This will be important in a little bit when we start talking about electromagnetic radiation. Uh, but in this case, uh, if we talked about the average current, something like this, and so notice the current's changing direction, so we might define one direction as positive and one as negative. If I asked you what the average current is, what would you say? Yeah. yeah, and that is not helpful. So notice when you're powering your toaster at home, you have current passing through, so the lovely filaments in your toaster, and the toaster doesn't care what direction the current's going. So you're just having bombardments of electrons with the atoms in the toaster filament and stuff like that causing heat and light to be given off and heat up your toast. So it doesn't care about the direction. And so tell me that there's an average current of zero is kind of not a great way to kind of look at this because so the household appliances that are having alternating current pass through them don't care what direction it's going in. And so something that's a little more convenient is what we call the root mean square current, and we can do this for root mean square uh, potential difference as well. And so what they do with this is they take all of the currents over time and they square them all. If you square a positive number, what do you get? Positive number, but when you square a negative number, what do you get? Yeah, another positive number. And so then you add those all together and then take the square root. And so what you find out is that your RMS This root mean square is equal to your maximum, your peak currents either side, so divided by the square root of two. So anybody know what the potential difference we typically have in our homes here in the US? 120, 120 volts. So it turns out you get a very similar equation for the potential difference here. So RMS, and you get the potential max all over the square root of two. And so it turns out that 120 volts is not the maximum, it's the RMS that you get. And so you find out that you actually have potential differences that end up being peak values higher, and it's about 170 if you work it out. So if you want to know that max, you just multiply it by square root of 2 times 120 volts, and you get it there. Sweet.